doing this replacement in is a 1999 Saab 93. Uh, so it's very similar as far as replacing the timing tensioner gasket. Uh, and anything earlier than 1999 with the B2, uh, B204 motor, as well as anything newer than 1999 that has the B205. On the Saab 95, it's just a little bit different because you have this bracket that's in the way. Um, but luckily, Saab knew you had to get back here, so they gave you this nice little hole um, to access the timing chain tensioner, uh, almost as if it was planned. So as I start flashing the tools that you need to Saab along with us today at the bottom of the screen, I'm just going to dive right in. There is my timing chain tensioner. It's clearly uh, the culprit of this oil leak that I have. Pretty gunked up with oil, and there's some visible oil around the gasket itself. So to replace this, the first thing we need to do is put a pry bar right there into the belt tensioner and release the tension on the belt because we have to back out this idler pulley just a little bit because the screw on it uh, is slightly blocking our access to the uh, timing chain tensioner. So once you have a half inch drive bar on there, just pull towards the car or the front of the car and that will release the tension on the belt so we can just slide it off the idler pulley. Once you've slipped the belt off, grab a 15 millimeter uh, socket or wrench. Uh, you can try using a, a ratchet, but there's really not a whole lot of room as you start to back this out. Your ratchet will start to uh, hit against the, the side wall of the, of the car. So I use a little crescent wrench that has a ratcheting socket in. Uh, just put that on there and start to back out this idler pulley just a little bit. And once you get it loose with the ratchet, you can kind of get your hand down in there and start to hand loosen it. Once you got the screw loose enough to where it's receded into its bracket, the next thing to do is to put a 12 millimeter socket on our actual uh, screw on the tensioner for the uh, timing chain tensioner spring. And if your screw for the spring is on there really tight like mine, sometimes it helps to slip a bar over the ratchet to give you just a little bit of torque, just to crack it loose. I'm gonna switch to a little bit shorter of an extension because I don't quite need one that long, but maybe this is a better angle for you to see the actual screw I'm trying to get at. Um, so just keep on loosening. Um, you do want to be careful that when you do finally get it fully loose that you do not lose the spring inside there as well as its little plastic plunger that it sits on. Next thing to do is to switch to a half inch drive ratchet and put our 27 millimeter socket around the entire tensioner itself. And this is why we made room uh, getting the idler pulley screw a little bit out of the way, just for room for this big bad boy as we start backing them out. Now, the tensioner is out. And there's our little plastic uh, guide for the spring that we wanted to make sure we didn't lose. So, quick little bit about how this uh, tensioner works. Uh, now, this is also a good time to measure the extension, see how worn your uh, chain guides are. This is the old gasket right here, which is just covered in oil.
So to reset this thing, there's a little tab right here. Um, and you want to reset it so that way when you put the spring back in, here, I'll just show you, it will uh, re-extend the tensioner. I mean, you can put it back in just like this because obviously that's where the uh, extension was at anyway. But I just like to reset it. So to do that, there's a little tab right here that you just push in on. There you go. And that will reset our tensioner. And then when we go to put the spring back in, this will extend it back out to where it needs to be. Okay, so I have the new gasket. I took the tensioner and went and just cleaned it up a little bit so that way I can spot any uh, new drips coming out of it. There is also a gasket uh, on the uh, screw right here, this little rubber gasket that you may want to order as well because on this one, see if I can get it to focus. Um, come on, there's a little break in this rubber, so this was more likely the culprit of my oil leak was just this little uh, gasket on this screw as opposed to the, the main tensioner gasket itself. Um, there's oil on it, but it still looks like it's pretty well intact. So just a piece of device, if you're gonna do this job, order this gasket as well as the little rubber grommet for the screw. Okay, once the new gasket is on there, this thing is ready to go back in. You gonna come help me? Huh? Okay, once that's tight, now we're gonna reinstall the uh, screw with the spring. Okay, with this part you got to be a little bit careful because as you put the spring, the plunger goes on the very end of it. Um, as you get this all together and start to go to put it back in the car, it's all going to want to fall out of the, the screw on you. So I like to take just a little bit of Vaseline or petroleum jelly, just something to kind of help the spring and the plunger uh, stay in there as you go to angle this thing back into the tensioner itself. Once you got the screw in there, or the spring in there, you can start reinstalling the screw. And as we do, you're going to hear the tensioner start to click as it extends. see me switching between my six inch or and my three inch extensions you know whichever extension you want to use uh, whatever's easiest for you I prefer the to get it kind of hand tight as much as possible and then just finish it off with the ratchet once you got everything put back together it's time to um, tighten up the 15 millimeter nut on the idler pulley just tight enough to where it's it can still um, spin but not have any sort of wobbling or squeaking which this one it's fully back in there. Now just take the breaker bar and stick it back in our tensioner and that way we can get our belt back on here. Okay, and then once you're all back together you are all done. Now I'm just gonna take a little bit of cleaner here and kind of clean up some of the oil that left, was left by that uh, oil leak. I took the air box off so I can make sure I got the belt on right. So you don't have to do this but I just want to make sure I can see exactly where um, fresh oil, hopefully none, but if any fresh oil starts to come out, I can see uh, exactly where it's coming from. So I hope that video helped. Thanks for watching and safe sobbing, everybody.